Welcome to Get In We're Going Healing, a place where we talk about physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health to help you let go of the things that are no longer serving you and are keeping you back from being your best, your greatest, your most authentic self. My name is Tova, and I will be your guide today. So this is a timeless reading, as always. All my readings are timeless. Um, but I thought today, if you're watching this when it is being released, it is being released over uh, the time of Christian holiday of Easter. Now, I don't mean Ostara, the pagan holiday of fertility that was March 21st this year. I'm talking about this is now Easter. And if we follow the Christian ideology of Easter, it's the story of when Jesus Christ was taken off the cross and put in um, into the cave. And over the course from Good Friday, he was removed from the cross and put in the cave. And by Easter Sunday, uh, he was resurrected. They opened the, they removed the rock from the cave and he was no longer there. He was gone. <clears throat> so in that respect, he had a transformation. And so today our reading is going to be, what transformation is coming to you? what transformation is coming to you. So we're going to begin with uh, a card to represent you. And we'll pick that to help us pick our three piles today, three piles for transformation. And we have three charms to choose from as well. So uh, the question becomes, which card do we choose from to choose our piles? And I think I see the deck right here. Yeah, I think this is the deck we are going to go with. This is the Mystic Tarot. The Mystic Tarot. So angels, guides, ancestors, spiritual team, all those who are working with myself and those who are watching this video and watching the recording uh, after the fact, Please give me clear guided messages for what our groups need to know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, one more shuffle. All right, so we're not going to look at them yet. We're going to pick pile one, pile two, and pile three. And we're going to add on our charms. With all these squares in it. Okay. Pile two, we have this butterfly. And for pile number three, we have this dark blue butterfly. Okay. So if you're new to pick a card, the way that it works is you choose whichever one has called to you, whichever one feels right. You can look in the description box to see the pile numbers. Maybe there's a lucky, your lucky number is in one of them. Um, or you can go with what feels right to you. You might be called to one pile, two piles, or all three piles. Whatever you feel called to listen to is the right call for you. It means there's a message somewhere in there for you. If you find that one of the piles does not resonate, that's okay, switch to another one, or maybe this reading is not for you. Once you've picked your piles, one, two, or three, I will see you at your designated reading. Hi, pile number ones. If you chose the blue butterfly, this is your reading. So each of these butterflies have something written on the back. So on the back of this one says, have faith. Have faith. I'll put it up so you can see it. Okay. So right there in your transformation, maybe something about needing to trust the universe a little more in your transformation. Let's have a look at your card. You got the seven of cups. 
the seven of cups. The seven of cups is all about choices, having opportunities available to you, opportunities that are going to be emotion, some emotionally fulfilling, some may not be so emotionally fulfilling. The purpose of the cups is to let you know that you have many choices. So what's coming for you in your, your transformation? Options, options are coming to you right now. So we're just gonna set this card right here with your butterfly, your have faith butterfly. And let's see what messages want to come through for you in this transformation. Angels, ancestors, guides, spiritual team of pile number one, all those who are on my team as well as their teams, please get uh, allow clear guided messages to come through and allow us to share what messages need to be shared about their transformation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Which pile would you like to read from? Light Seer's Tarot. Okay. We're going to begin with the Light Seer's Tarot. What messages does pile number one need to know about their transformation? What messages does pile number one need to know about their transformation? What does pile number one need to know about their transformation? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are going to be having a victory over feeling apathetic. So the Four of Cups is um, feeling apathy. It's feeling, if you look at the card here, what you'll see is she's she's got all this great stuff, right? She's got these bowls here. These ones are empty. And she's got this one here that's full and her hands on it, but she's not looking at that one. She's over here looking at, like, bored, looking off into the distance, like, ugh, nothing is good, everything's terrible, ugh, right? Look at that face. But look at the rainbows here, the blessings coming down into this bowl. So, with the reverse, with this one, this card is generally considered apathy, not noticing what your blessings are. But it came up in the reverse and you got the victory card, the six of wands, which is pretty self-explanatory when you see the image. It is victorious. You are coming out on top. So what's coming for you in your transformation? The first thing is that you are going to have success and be feeling successful because apathy is going to be disappearing. You're going to be connecting and you're going to have victory over that. You're going to be feeling successful. You're going to be feeling like you're on top of the world in this transformation. You're going to be feeling emotionally fulfilled or on the way to that with the decision that you made, two of wands, two of swords, sorry, on the bottom of the deck. That's a decision that has to be made. So there's a decision that you're going to be making that's going to lead you to this place of victory and joy. Yeah, you're going to be in control. The king of swords is about controlling. The King of Swords is about knowing the swords are always your intellect. Swords are your thought patterns, always. So the, the King of Swords is in control of his thought patterns. The King of Swords is knows what he wants, knows what he's doing, knows what he's looking for. Okay, now these cards are genderless. They're always genderless. It doesn't matter who's listening to the reading. The cards, I say he, she in those cases, but I'm just referring to the imagery or the meaning of the card. I'm not referring to specific genders of those listening. So, okay. Um, so you're going to be feeling in control of your life. Tell me about this transformation. You've been having feelings like your dreams aren't able to come true. Your financial dreams, you're feeling lack. You're feeling like you don't have anything. Is that part of the past? Yeah, that's part of old emotions that are trapped. That's part of your old thinking pattern. That might be a thinking pattern that you're currently in that you're transforming out of. This idea that this love, this thing that could bring you joy and happiness in your heart 
is unobtainable. And that might be what it is that you're having victory over this. Can you tell me more uh, with the bottom of the deck? We've got the hanged man in reverse. means you've got a change of perspective that you've made. There's a change of perspective that's going to be coming that's going to help you get out of this. So we're going to ask a little more. Can you tell me, Spirit, more about what it is, these options? So the transformation that our pile number one is going through is feeling victorious over not feeling like they have the things that they want. They're getting greater control over their feelings of lack and their feelings of um, not having their emotional bucket filled. So what else can you tell us about this? So what, where are they now? Where are they now that they're going to be coming out of? Loneliness. And they're going to be coming out of strength. That one wants to come out too. They're going to be walking away from what doesn't serve you. Okay, so we've got the three of cups in reverse. Three of cups is community. You can see on the card, these people are together. They're connecting their friends. They're, they look like they're happy. But this in reverse means you're feeling lonely. You're feeling lonely, but your strength is coming. Your compassion is coming. Your connection is coming. That's going to lead you to walk away from the things that no longer serve you emotionally. You see her walking away from this cup in the background. This is walking away from the emotional things that do not serve you. Bottom of the deck, we've got the 10 of wands releasing emotional burdens that have been heavy for you that are releasing burdens that are not yours, releasing responsibilities that are not yours, letting go of carrying the burdens that are not yours to carry okay so that's at the bottom of the deck so already what I'm seeing in this transformation that's coming for you from what I can see is that you're going to be moving from a place of feeling like you are alone feeling like you do not have the resources you do not have the emotional connection you do not have those things you're going to be walking away from that and gaining strength through your walking away from those things. And as you gain strength through walking away, you're going to gain control and that's going to create victory for you. And of course, don't forget, we started out with the seven of cups and the seven of cups again is many opportunities and many options available to you, having choices available to you. So what we're seeing at this point is that the six, that you're going to be moving past these old things, these old things that no longer serve you. Can you tell us anything else about what we're walking away from? Things are going to be illuminated for you. There is teamwork. There's, there's help coming. Three of pentacles is, is a, a cooperation. It's people working together. Pentacles are worldly things, physical things that you can feel on the, this earthly plane. And these are people working together towards a common goal. This is teamwork coming in with the moon. The moon um, is about illuminating things, truth that were in shadow, particularly the full moon. If you're watching this one, I'm putting it out. We just had the full moon in Libra and the full moons are all about releasing things that no longer serve us. Again, walking away from things that no longer serve us, that are not in our highest good. The moon is about showing those things that were once in darkness and illuminating them by the light of the full moon, showing them they're still somewhat shadowy and hazy, but the moon brings balance. The moon brings intuition. The moon is about intuition. The moon is about trusting your intuitive guidance, trusting your intuitive understanding, your connection to the femininity, the sacred divine, the sacred feminine, and the sacred feminine is known to be the moon. The moon is usually seen as the feminine energy, goddess moon. Um, and so with the moon coming out here with cooperation, I'm, there's a couple of interpretations to this. It could be that you are having patterns that you didn't know were there coming to the light, which is likely, but at the same time, what I think we're seeing when these two come out together like this. What I think it's saying is that there are people there who are able to help you. There are people who are able to guide you and show you and show you the way of where you need to go. You haven't been able to see them, but you're going to start being able to see them. There's going to start being intuitive understanding 
you're going to understand who is part of your team. This could be bringing in your spiritual team, your spiritual tribe, your tribe of people who are meant to help you work through this. Because at the bottom of the deck, we have the two of cups and the two of cups is all about working together harmoniously with others emotionally fulfilling your cup and someone else's cup. Everybody's working together to have their, everybody feels like they're giving and taking an equal amount. So I think the transformation that they're saying that you are about to go through is that you are going to be leaving behind this old paradigm of lack that you don't have enough and you're going to be moving into as you're releasing that you're going to be moving into a space where you are going to have the connection you are going to have the community you are going to have all of those things that you need in order to connect with your intuition and to thrive let's find out a little bit more can you give me some more information spirit about what options might be coming for the seven of cups for our Pile number one, who has so many options in our seven of cups, who are being asked to have faith in the universe, have faith in spirit, have faith in what's meant to come for them, that it will come for them. Can you give me any advice for them as they move forward in this transformation? What advice do you have? Or what options? Sorry, can we go with options? What options might be coming available for them? High Priestess, trusting your intuition, and Five of Swords with comparison. So, the options coming to you are to stay stuck in your pattern of comparing yourself to others. In this card, we have, this is the Osho Zen deck, and we have the Oak Tree and the Bamboo Tree. And this card talks about that no one ever said the oak is more beautiful than the bamboo or the bamboo is more beautiful than the oak. Either are beautiful in their own way for their own reasons and is one is not better than the other. The five of swords is about being stuck in a mode of comparing that let, if you're the bamboo that you are better or lesser than the oak or if you're the oak that you are better or lesser than the bamboo this card is reminding you you could be stuck in this old pattern okay you could stay stuck in this comparison where you're comparing yourself to others either favorably or unfavorably or you could move into the space of the high priestess the high priestess in this card is the inner voice and is reminding you to go inward now the high priestess she is the counterpart to the magician she produces things in the in the, the world through intuition through mental connection through what she can suss, suss out mentally and work through she is connected to her intuition to her third eye to divinity she creates things in the energetic realm the magician card number one in the deck is the one that creates things in the 3d realm in the physical realm she creates things in the energetic realm so one of the, the, some of the choices you're having is trusting your intuition and following and creating things in the energetic realm or staying stuck in comparison in this space of competing and comparing yourself to others. What other choices might be coming up for our pile number one? Thank you. Hanged man, a new vision. You might be able to see things from a new perspective. The hanged one, in this one it's called new vision, is about a change in perspective, seeing things from a different point of view than you were seeing things before. Oftentimes when we get stuck in certain thinking patterns, the reason we're stuck there is we're seeing it from a very specific point of view. And we believe that that is the truth of what we're seeing. But if we were to change our perspective, we would actually see that there's more to it than simply the way that we've seen it. Um, an example that I'm, I'm getting in my mind is about um, when they take witness statements at like, let's say the scene of an accident, depending on where that person were, the different people who are being interviewed as witnesses, depending on where they were and their frame of mind and what they were doing and if they were paying attention, 
each of their stories may differ wildly from the others when co- when all the stories are put together because from the perspective of where you were standing or what how you were seeing the world through whatever lens you were seeing the world dictates how you describe the situation one person might say that they saw the the driver um, wasn't paying attention and was distracted while another person might say oh no they were very focused It all depends on how you perceive things. If the person who was themselves may be dysregulated and out of sorts, they might perceive others around them to have also been out of sorts. It doesn't mean that they were. So this card is reminding, is letting you know that one of the options available to you is to change your perspective, to look at things from a different point of view, to see it from a different direction, and then possibly realize that maybe the way that you were looking at it wasn't the right way. And maybe you see things differently now. Maybe the situation wasn't as bad as you initially perceived, or maybe wasn't as good as you initially perceived, depending on the the situation that applies. Take what resonates, let go of what doesn't, right? So let's see what other choices might be available to you. Our pile number ones, what other choices might be available to them? You want to jump out, so I'm going to find out. Oh, you have a lot of choices available to you. Okay. So the one that wanted to jump out before, we've got Hermit. Spending time alone. In aloneness. So one of the options available to you is to be alone. Like in... um, like a, um, you know, a wise yogi on a mountaintop who's isolated and doing their own thing, that by itself is seen as a mark of wisdom, a yogi off by themselves of wisdom. That's the introspection. That's, again, going inward and in introspection and looking at things from a different perspective. Again, seeing what you can dis- discern from situations. Another option available to you is to release your old conditioning. So this card is a traditional devil card, but in this deck, what we see is a lion who is wearing this, a sheepskin. And the way the story goes on this, this is a lion who thought he was a sheep. And he tried to live his life trying to be a sheep and wearing sheep's clothing and trying very hard to be a sheep and could not understand why he just could not, no matter how hard he tried, become a sheep. Until one day an old lion showed up where the herd was and took him to uh, a pond and showed him and said, you are not a sheep. Look at your reflection. You are a lion. You look just like me. Why are you trying to be a sheep? As long as you try to be a sheep, you'll never be happy because you are not a sheep. You are, in fact, a lion. And when you start living your life as a lion, you will find more satisfaction. This card is reminding you about the idea of releasing the, the person who you thought you were supposed to be, the person other people told you that you are supposed to be because you are not the person that others told you you were. You are you. You are yourself. If you don't know who that is, it's time to take off the sheepskin and figure out what kind of lion you are. Stretch yourself as a lion. See what a lion's claws can do. See what a lion can do running. See what a lion can do that a sheep cannot. One of the options available to you is to release who you thought you were supposed to be and your conditioning so that you can live as who you are. Yes, indeed. (laughs) And these three came out together. And I feel like this all works together as a message. So you got the three of swords with isolation. You got intensity with the page of wands. And you got the death card with transformation, which is very apropos given that this message is about what transformation is coming for you. So here's what I feel this message is saying. So the three of swords in this particular deck shows a man who's frozen and he's frozen in the ice, but the tears, which are rainbow tears, the tears are actually melting the ice around him and freeing him. So this three of swords reminds us that heartbreak, pain, emotional pain can be the thing that frees us by allowing ourselves to feel the pain and allow the tears to fall. It can melt even the iciest, hardest of hearts and allow softness and allow 
allow our hearts to break open for the sake of healing. We think that heartbreak means that it's going to be broken and shattered into an irreparable mess. But in fact, breaking your heart open breaks apart the ice and the solidness that was put there through our traumas, allows us to heal through them. When we have the the page of wands with intensity, it's moving forward with intensity. It's moving in a direction with purpose, with focus. And of course, with the death card, we have transformation. And in this particular card, you see a face here and death is touching the face, but it's being transformed into the phoenix. And it's a reminder that the phoenix, in order to rise again, must die. It must be consumed in the flames. But when it is consumed in the flames, when it becomes nothing but ash, the phoenix rises from the ashes of what once was into something greater than what it was before, into something more magnificent than what it was before. It releases the old to grow anew. Just like as we talk about with the butterflies, it moves from a caterpillar into a butterfly. It releases what it once was to become something that is more beautiful and more amazing than what it was before. That's lighter and gives it wings, lets it get off the ground and truly fly. So this message together, I feel like the option available to you is to allow yourself to feel, allow the heartbreak to happen because the heartbreak and the tears and the emotions is what's going to move you very quickly into your transformation. Now, I don't know if this is an option or if this is a message being shared in its entirety about your transformation, but I will tell you that I have learned through my own transformation that for me, releasing old pain, releasing old stuck patterns, releasing all that old stuff, that loneliness, that, that lack of worth, all of that stuff, for me, it was released through tears. I had to cry through it. I had to let the emotion come up and be released. And the best, most healthiest way for me was to allow the tears to fall. And by allowing myself to cry out the feelings, allowing myself to cry out the, the pain that was trapped inside my heart, I did actually free the pain. I cleared the wounds and the wounds were able to heal. So I think you're being asked in this to allow yourself to feel what those feelings are and that will move your transformation ahead faster. That will move you in the direction you want. And being reminded with the Eight of Swords, in this deck it's guilt, in the usual deck it's a person surrounded by swords. And the Eight of Swords generally is the reminder that you have a way out, you just don't see it. You're so trapped in your own guilt, either the guilt of others or the guilt of yourself. You're so trapped in those feelings of someone is guilty that you can't allow yourself to find the freedom, the way out. Just like in the traditional card with the sword surrounding the character and she's wearing a blindfold. If she were to take the blindfold off, she could easily step her way through the swords. But because she is blindfolded, she cannot see that there is an easy way out and she feels trapped by her own thoughts. This card talks about the same thing. You are trapped by your feelings of guilt, either someone else's guilt or your guilt, but guilt of some person is holding you hostage and holding you trapped in that timeline, in that thinking pattern, in that reality. When you can release guilt, when you can find compassion, when you can find, I mean, we talk about the strength card. The strength card is compassion. The strength card is the lion laying down with the lamb. Oh my goodness. How funny is that? You got the lion and the lamb twice with two different cards, because this is not the strength card. This is the devil card. This is the strength card. And you got the lion and the lamb twice. If I can, if I remember the story, I want to say in Christianity, um, the lion laying down with the lamb was supposed to be a sign of God coming. If I, if I'm remembering that correctly, I may be thinking of that wrong, but I want to say it's, uh, when the lion lays down with the lamb, there will be peace. And I feel like that's significant to you because it is when you let go of feeling the need to be the lion and devour the lamb or to fight or to compete, when you instead 
meet it with compassion. The strength card, excuse me, in traditional decks talks about uh, a woman who is who lets the lion come to her and put her the lion's head on her lap. The lion would not come to her if she were aggressive, if she were trying to force the lion to come to her. The lion would meet aggression with aggression. Instead, the strength cards talks about in that motion it talks about meeting aggression with compassion meeting aggression with understanding meeting a perceived aggression because the lion isn't coming with aggression the lion is coming with curiosity and instead of meeting the lion with fear or anger or aggression the character meets the lion with compassion and peace and the lion comes over curiously with peace in its heart and lays its head down and finds comfort. So I think in this transformation, you're being asked, let go of trying to be who you thought you were supposed to be. And instead, allow yourself to be. Let go of guilt, of who is guilty, who is not, who is the victim, who is the villain. Nobody is the villain, nobody is the victim. Everybody is just people learning to do stuff. Nobody is doing anything. Anyone who's even doing things mean at the core of that is someone who has also been victimized in their past and they've created armor to protect themselves. Every single one of us, every single one of us is truly just a scared child underneath it, a sad child, someone whose needs haven't been met and we've built up all this armor around it. So let go of this idea that someone has to be guilty that you are guilty or they are guilty or that someone else has to be in, that it's their fault. Let go of blame and fault and instead allow things to be, allow it to be and allow yourself to be transformed. Okay? Have faith. Have faith. Okay? Have faith that options are available to you. Have faith that you can do this. Have faith that you will move forward and this will be the transformation that comes to you. So my lovely pile number ones, I hope that this message reached you. I hope that this brought you some clarity. I hope that you are having a great time on your transformation. I hope that you will come to the light side of your transformation soon as you work through your darkness. And I wish you all the best. If you want to get, book a personal reading, that information is in the description box. You can follow me on my social media at Instagram or Facebook at Getting We're Going Healing. And if you are interested in more specific content on our patreon and supporting the channel you can find that information in the description box below if you wanted to donate to the reading you can do that that's in the description box as well so until next time fellow humans love and light bye hi pile number twos if you picked the white butterfly this is your reading so each of the butterflies have something written on the back so this one says Love you always. Love you always. So what a lovely message to start out. So let's see what card we have to we have here. Ten of Swords. Ooh. So what is your transformation? Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords is closing out an old cycle, an old mental cycle, but an, a mental cycle that like cut you, that damaged you, that hurt you, that caused you pain. Ten of the tens are always closing out cycles, and Swords are the um, our intellect, our mental, are the things that we think about, right? So. This story, this image has the Medusa in it. I wonder if this is the story of, um, of, well, there's Gorgons. I'm not sure which story this is, but we see the sun rising. We might see death here, but what we see is the sun rising in the distance right here, which heralds a new beginning, a new start. Which is wonderful when we're starting out with uh, what your transformation is, what transform what's happening in your transformation. We have love you always and we have an ending of a, a thought cycle and a closing out of something, which is fantastic. So let's get some further messages here. So angels, guides, ancestors, spiritual team of pile number two, our love you always. What is it that you would like to share with them? What needs to be heard about their transformation? 
Tell me some more about what's coming in their transformation. What's coming for them in their transformation? Tell me more. Please and thank you. All right. Okay. So, so far what's coming to you in your transformation, there is deception. With the seven of swords, there is deception. So in your current situation, I don't know what's happening with you, but um, swords are your intellect and the seven, this guy is being sneaky, right? You see him sneaking away. So it means something sneaky. Some some lies have made you feel like this, that the new start wasn't coming. This is the fool. The fool is all about new starts. So it's in reverse making you feel like you're stuck and that it's not coming. And we've got the seven of cups and the seven of cups is projection, imagination. You see this guy here and he's got these bowls turned over and what he's seeing, he's imagining little creatures living there and all that, right? Cups are your emotions. So we've got this in reverse. So these three cards coming out together, the message that I understand through the three of them is lies have made you, lies or deception, either from yourself or for others, have made you feel like your new start isn't coming. And it's made you give up imagining. It's made you give up believing. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the seven of cups in reverse? Thank you. An offer is coming to you. The Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is um, emotional. It's communication. It's He's coming in. If you look at this card, what we see is this guy with these roses and he's brought a picnic and he's got a drink and a letter and he's got his horse here and he looks like he, he looks vulnerable. He looks ready to, to open his heart. So the seven of cups, I asked for clarification on the seven of cups in reverse and we got the knight of cups. So when asking for what's going on with why that you don't believe, why you're, you're not imagining, why you can't believe it, because there's an offer you're waiting for. There's an, a, an emotional offer you're still waiting for. Can you tell me some more? Thank you. Yeah, you're looking for a partnership. You're looking for a commitment, a connection, and it hasn't happened yet. And you're waiting for that. So it might be the transformation you're waiting on might be a romantic, a romantic transformation, an ending of thought patterns and cycles and a romantic transformation. Can you give me some more detail on the fool, please? Fool in reverse. Why is the fool in reverse? Thank you. Uh, because you're taking things slow yeah the page of wands is um intensity taking things quickly moving things fast and the page of wands in reverse means things moving slowly so the reason that you feel like it's not the new start isn't coming is because it's moving very slowly and that's causing you to believe that it's not going to happen but it is going to happen because your Knight of Wands, your Knight of Cups is coming with an offer, with something to communicate, with something to say, with his heart on his sleeve. And that is coming and it's going to lead to, um, it's going to lead to a, a greater partnership. It's going to lead to greater connection. Can you tell me more about the Seven of Swords? What's, what deception is there? Tell me more about the Seven of Swords, please. Thank you. You feel like you you won't have a happy family and that you had to walk away. That the only way was for you, the only option was for you to walk away. So the Ten of Cups is your happy family card. Your Ten of Cups is getting your heart fulfilled. Again, cups are emotions. So the Ten of Cups is closing out a cycle, but it's a happy cycle. It's getting your wishes fulfilled. And the Eight of Cups is walking away from what no longer serves your highest good, what no longer serves you emotionally. She's walking away from that cup there and turning her back and walking towards a sunrise, a new beginning. She's leaving what's old in the dark behind and walking towards 
a sunrise, a greater beginning. So the deception that is happening, that was happening in your transformation, the deception was that your new start wasn't going to happen and that you were going to have to walk away. You, the lie that you told yourself, the lie that you've been believing is that you're not going to get a happy ever after. So you need to walk away and you're not going to get a new start. But the advice on the new start, the clarification is the new start that you're looking for is moving very slowly. It's coming, but it's moving slowly. And there is an offer coming, but you have to believe that it's coming. Can you give me some more on the two of cups, please? Thank you. Two of cups. Oh my goodness. No, we can't, we can't take that many cards. You're gonna have to give me something more. A little less, a little less, please. Two of cups. Can we please clarify two of cups? I'm sorry. I can't take that many cards. Not for one card. Two of cups, please clarify two of cups to be playful. So what's going to come is that with your new partnership, with your new connection, it's going to come with the knight of wands with playfulness. It's going to come with being silly and light and enjoying life a little more and just being happy and in your element. That's a transformation that's coming for you. With on the bottom of the deck, the eight of pentacles, which is working hard towards your goals. So the transformation that I'm seeing for you, the transformation that's coming for you is love is a new start is a new start in love a new start in thoughts a new start in all of it with the shadow card being the eight of pentacles if you put in the hard work if you put in the work to do to do it it will come to you and i want to say quickly because even on this card we have one full moon cycle new moon new move to full moon Back down to new moon, one full cycle. That's going to be a month cycle. So again, talking about cycles, it might not be specifically a month, but we are talking in cycles. So what I feel is happening in this reading is that you are closing out this old cycle. Again, 10 of swords, you're closing out this old cycle, but you're going to be opening a new one. It is just in transit right now. It's in transit right now. Okay, so let's get a few more cards to get some more information here. All right, so can you tell me more, Spirit, about this transformation, this new love, this new start, this new beginning that's coming for our lovely pile number twos with love you always, which makes me think that there's an unconditional love coming. Can you tell me some more? Please, and thank you. Some more about this transformation coming for pile two, please. Thank you. There will be a celebration. This transformation that's coming is something that you are going to be so happy with. You are going to be celebrating with your friends. You are going to be celebrating with the three of cups. You're going to be celebrating with those that you that are your tribe, with your people. This new start, this transformation is going to bring you a great amount of joy. Lots of things to celebrate. What else can you tell me about this transformation coming for pile number two it's going to require you to release your ego thinking we have the knight of swords and the knight of swords is the fastest moving um, knight in the deck i believe but in this particular card what we see is this person's mind and there's all these eyeballs and gears and stuff right and their mind has a mouth. And this card talks about letting your ego mind, your overthinking mind, get the better of you. When you are not thinking with your intuition, when you're not connecting to your intuition, then when you are connecting to your parts and your ego mind, you may find yourself chattering on and telling yourself stories that are not true if this is resonating with you you might want to check out pile number one had a message that kind of re revolved around this so you might want to check that out so 
this card talks about being stuck inside your thinking mind and not getting trapped inside and letting your ego do the talking for you, but to be in your higher self that is above this thinking pattern. So I feel like at this time you're being asked, part of the transformation that's going to happen for you is learning to let go of your ego thinking, let go of your parts thinking. If parts work is something that you are interested in, which is uh, learning to connect with your individual parts of you, your teenage to you, your young you, your early 20 somethings you, the various parts of you that are holding wounding. Um, I have some episodes on my channel, my podcast itself on Spotify and on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts. Um, that talk about parts work and my experience with uh, intra families or internal family systems parts work. That might be something that you are being called to do, but you are definitely being called to learn to divine your or uh, divide your ego mind from your higher self mind. What else is coming in this transformation? Thank you. We'll take these three cards. You're going to be seeing beyond the illusion. You're going to be moving past worldly issues. Okay, hold on. No. All right, listen. Sorry, not you. <laughs> spirit, spirit, I need you to keep your messages a little shorter, please. Just for, just for ease, please. Um, what else is coming in this transformation for pile number two, please? Tower moments. Yep. Okay, so here's the thing. Tower moments seem scary to a lot of people, but tower moments are necessary. Here's the problem. When you build, you can build the most beautiful, fantastic palace, but if you build it on foundation that is crappy, that is falling apart, that was shoddy at best, it doesn't matter how beautiful that palace is. If the foundation is bad, the whole palace is going to come tumbling down. And it doesn't matter how beautiful it is, it's still going to come falling down. The thing about tower moments, yes, they suck in the moment. They absolutely do. When the things that you have built up around you start falling apart, the jobs, the friendships, the relationships, the connections, the things that you thought you wanted, the life that you had planned, when all those things start falling down around your ears, it is going to feel like the world is ending. But here's the thing. In order for you to build a brand new palace, a brand new home, a brand new life for a new beginning with the fool, for a new beginning to happen, you have to tear down the old broken garbage. You can't, you can't build, you can't build on garbage. You can't build on something that's not a solid foundation. You have to rebuild the foundation till it's good and solid and it can support the structure you are building on top of it. So tower moments, people often get afraid of tower moments because of the pain that's going to come with the tower. And yes, tower moments bring pain, emotional pain. I am not going to sugarcoat that for you, but I'm going to be real with you. Suffer through the pain, suffer through. Because when you make it through, when you come out the other side of the pain, when you go through, when it's falling on top of the seven of cups with projecting, with imagination, when you start to break down what is not real, the things that are not true, the ego stories that you tell yourself, when you begin to break them down into nothing, you begin to understand where they came from and then you can you can get rid of them. And then you can have your two of cups. You can have your 10 of cups. You can have your fool. You can have your new beginning. You can have all those beautiful things, but you can't have a new beginning based on an old crappy past. You're going to have to tear it all down, burn it down to the ground and then rise like the Phoenix. Okay. That's, uh, that's the message I'm, I'm being shared. I'm being sent to share. So I'm going to pull another card here. What else? Yes. You're being taught maturity, emotional maturity. Now this card technically is the ace of pentacles, which is a new financial start. But in this card, it is maturity. And here's what I found when this card comes up. 
When this card came up often for me, especially in combination with these three cards, because I myself got these a lot during my healing journey, that I was spending a lot of time hearing my ego mind talk and it was all going to be have to torn, be torn down and I was going to grow emotionally and grow in maturity of emotional maturity. If this is something that's resonating with you, you might find the book Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents to be a useful guide. I know I did. I was raised with parents who are emotionally immature. This is not meant to be an insult. It is meant to be strictly mature in the sense of developed and, and pursued. So my parents' emotional development was not that of the age that they were living. It was more that of a young child where their emotional development had arrested emotional development. Or um, <laughs> Anyway, um, so their emotional development was arrested at a younger level. Now, that was also true for me, that my emotional maturity had topped out somewhere around my teen years. And so I was still reacting emotionally as my teenage self rather than as my adult self. Same thing as my reacting as my child self instead of my adult self. So I had to grow and learn and become emotionally mature. So when this card comes up in combination with things to celebrate as you release your emotional, your uh, connection to your ego and tear down all that no longer is in your best interest, it's going to garner you maturity. It's going, you're going to grow up. You're going to grow and you're going to grow up. And that's a beautiful thing. That's something that you absolutely want. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Knight of pentacles with adventure because this new thing as you grow and mature and as you tear down these new things this new start is coming with adventure it's a new adventure be excited about what life can bring you be excited about what life can offer you be excited about what life can do it's not life isn't this old thing that was built on these towers that these towers were built on that's terrible foundation you are the creator of your own life and these things can happen for you. These things were lies, right? That you can't have this beautiful, this beautiful happy ever after. I mean, let's be real. Happy ever after is not a thing. Let, let's be absolutely clear. Happy is a thing, but that remember that we don't derive our happiness from others. We derive our happiness from ourselves. If we are looking at another person to make us happy, then we are giving power of our happiness to them. We are putting it in their hands to decide whether or not we get to be happy at someone else's choosing. We don't look to someone else to bring our happiness. We derive our own happiness from our own things. And then no one can take your happiness from you. You are not waiting on anyone to bring happiness to you at their choosing. Instead, you create your own happiness. And that's what your new beginning will be. So pile number two. I hope that this gave you some idea. Love you always. Again, on your, um, on your um, butterfly, that might be a self-love self-love love you always so pile number two i hope that this gave you some idea of what is coming in your transformation do not fear your transformation butterflies don't fear a caterpillar doesn't go into the cocoon afraid of what's going to happen in the cocoon a butterfly goes into the cocoon knowing that when it comes out it's going to be a butterfly it might not know how it got there, but remember that while it's in the cocoon, it dissolves its entire being of who it is. It has its own tower moment. It breaks itself down and reforms into something better, something beautiful through the pain. So don't fear your tower. Don't fear the ending of these things. These are things that will bring you your happiness. Remember to be playful. Remember to take life lighter. Don't, take, be, don't be so serious. Allow life to be joyous. 
So if this resonated for you, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share. If you like this content, you can check out some information in the description box on how to book uh, a personal reading for moving through in the future. You can also follow my Patreon for more exclusive content. If you like this and you want to leave a donation, that information is in the description box below. And I hope that you have a lovely, lovely day. Until next time. Bye. Hi, my lovely pile number threes. If you chose the dark blue butterfly, this is your reading. So on the back, all of these have little things written on the back. And on the back of this butterfly says, true blue friend. I'll hold that up so you can see it. true blue friend. So that might say something right away. Maybe your transformation is new friendships. Maybe your transformation is that you're going to be a better friend. Let's find out. So let's see what card you picked. Pile number three, you got the two of cups. Indeed, what a... Dude, I couldn't even pick this better. The two of cups is all about working together in partnership. This is a true blue friend. This would be someone who is, who has your back. This might be a romantic partnership. This might be a friendship, but the two of cups is all about great partnership and working together. So, I mean, that's very fitting given that you got the butterfly of true blue friend. So that's already a very nice start to your transformation. What transformation is coming to, for you? Could be romance. Could be a transformation in your friendships. Let's find out some more. Angels, ancestors, guides of pile number three. Please give us clear guided information on what their transformation is. What they can expect in their transformation. What they can expect to have come to them. What area they're going to transform in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Messages for pile number three, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So starting out the gate, we have the six of cups with letting go of the past and the chariot moving things forward. Now that's a very interesting combination. So the first card being the six of cups, what we see here is this guy sitting here with his dog, his lab, and he's thinking about the past when the dog was a puppy and he was just a little boy. And this is talking about us being uh, reminiscing, but it can also talk about us being focused on the past. And then we've got the chariot, which is about balance and things moving quickly. Think about how fast a chariot moves, those horses move quickly. But here's the thing. The chariot, it doesn't show it in this particular card, but the chariot also talks about being stuck. Because in the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck, uh, what you'll see is somebody who is cemented into the chariot. He cannot leave the chariot. He is stuck. He is stuck in moving forward, but not have, but being indecisive. So when we put these two together, the message I'm already getting that your about your transformation is you're feeling stuck in your past. You're feeling stuck in an emotional past that you need to move through. Okay, let's find out some more. What's What else is happening with this transformation for pile number three? Thank you. And you're keeping things to yourself. You're keeping your possessions to yourself. You're holding things feeling like others are not trustworthy. You're keeping it to yourself and you're, you're keeping things away from others feeling like, what if they take things from me? What if something gets taken from me? Hmm. It's also an idea of lack mentality. Thank you. Yeah. You want, in this transformation, I feel like when we, I feel like these are two, where you're going, where you're coming from to where you're going. Okay, so we've got the Six of Cups and the Chariot and the Four of Pentacles all being the past and lack. And I feel like the Nine of Pentacles is um, getting your wishes fulfilled, having abundance, having all the things that you need. And the Four of Swords is about protecting yourself, keeping yourself, keeping your heart to yourself, keeping to yourself more and keeping your boundaries, protecting yourself. 
So I feel like maybe you're going to be learning to work boundaries. Maybe you're going to, okay. So if we put it together, the two of cups, which is you is all about partnerships. So all right, already the, the transformation is about partnerships. So being stuck in your past and feeling like you're in a position of lack. So you don't feel, you want your dreams to come true. You want your, your abundance to come, but you're keeping yourself back. You're holding yourself back and protecting yourself. Why? Because you're unhealed. The King of Cups is healing in reverse is unhealed because you have unhealed wounds that you haven't addressed yet that are preventing you from moving that way. Can you clarify the Six of Cups, please? Why is the Six of Cups here? You're looking at a past, past happiness, past joy. The Ten of Cups is dreams fulfilled. It's getting everything that your heart desires. It's getting all, the, it's the happy family card. It's getting everything you ever dreamed of. So when we come in under the Six of Cups, when asked to clarify what's the what's being held on to the past, the thing that you're holding on to the past is a, a past relationship. A past relationship that is no longer part of your life. What's up with the chariot? Can you clarify the chariot, please? Why is the chariot here? Oh my goodness, okay. The chariot is clarified by the Queen of Cups reversed being unable to open up to things nine of swords because of feeling sorrow two of wands feeling like you're stuck and unable to explore the seven of pentacles but being patient and waiting so the feeling that you're feeling stuck that you're moving forward but you're not able to get out of something the reason that you're feeling like you're stuck and able to not get out of something is because you are not open to receiving what is available, what love is available to you. And because you're not open to receiving the love that's available to you, you're not receiving, you're not in a, a space of receiving. It's causing you emotional pain and sorrow. So you're, it's making you cry. It's making you hold yourself, hold your head, your hand and cry. And I'm so sorry. I mean, that, that sucks. That is the essence of growth and transformation, unfortunately, is um, pain. Because mu much of the time we transform through pain, whether that's grief, whether that's heartbreak, whether that's loss, whether, you know, whatever it is, we are transformed through our pain. The Buddhists consider it suffering. We are transformed through our suffering. And it is true. Our suffering is what allows us to release the suffering. By being in suffering, we're able to recognize the suffering and release the suffering. You are allowing yourself to be in a space of suffering because you are not able to receive. You're not open to receiving what's coming to you. You can't see it. So it's making you feel like your, your heart is breaking with the two of wands in reverse. The two of wands is all about blazing a new trail. It's about exploring. It's about adventure. It's about seeing what's out there. If we look at the card, what we see is she's looking out the window. She's got these two wands and we see a globe. We see a, a van. We see movement and travel but it's in reverse. So you're not feeling movement and travel. You're feeling stuck, but your advice that came out with it was the seven of pentacles, which is to be patient. This card talks about the seeds have already been planted under the ground. Just because you don't see the plant coming through the ground does not mean nothing is happening. Just because you cannot see the evidence of the seeds growing does not mean the seeds are not growing And what you need to be is patient. Once the seeds are planted, you're not going to go dig them up to see, are they growing? You just have nothing to do, but wait, wait until they burst through the earth. So you're being asked in this position where you feel like your heart is breaking and that you're stuck. Just wait, just wait. Okay. The four of pentacles. Let's, conf let's uh, clarify the four of pentacles. Why is the four of pentacles here? What's up with the four of pentacles? Why are we feeling like we have to keep things to ourselves? Why are we not sharing? Thank you. Because of our conditioning. 
with the devil. The devil is talking about um, your ego and your shadow self pulling the strings. In this image, we see this person down here in the shadow and there's strings attached to the devil's hand and he's manipulating the person like a puppet. That is your shadow self. When you are not doing your shadow work, when you are letting your unhealed parts run the show, the unhealed parts are playing you like a puppet. You are not free to make your choices because your unhealed parts are the ones making your choices. The parts of you that, let's say your teenage self that might have been rebellious or angry or people pleasing, your child self, your 20 something self, all the different parts of you that were invalidated and that are unhealed again with the king of cups unhealed because the king of cups is healing we have it in reverse unhealed all of those unhealed parts of you those parts if you don't hear them if you don't validate them if you don't let them have their have their say let them speak give them a voice if you don't give them that opportunity to speak they will force their way through and be the ones that control you they become the puppet master just like in this image, they're the ones that pull the strings. They're the ones that make the decisions, not your higher self, not your greater self, not your, yourself that knows better, not yourself that can see things from a wider, greater lens and see, you know what, this isn't that big of a deal. What you do is you get caught up in your thinking and your overthinking and your shadow self begins to be the puppeteer. So why are you in a position of feeling like you don't have anything that you have to keep things to yourself? Because your shadow parts are controlling stuff and telling you that you are in a space of lack when you are not telling you that others are going to take things from you when they are not. You can't see the truth of it because you are trapped in what your shadow is telling you. It's controlling the reins. So why are we, why is the nine of pentacles here? What is it that you want to have come? What is your abundance and dream come true you want? What is the Nine of Pentacles here for, please? Thank you. Okay. The Nine of Pentacles is clarified by the Ten of Swords in reverse, the Tower, and the Moon in reverse. Okay. So the thing that is stopping you from getting the thing that you want, having your dreams desired, is that you are still holding on to an old cycle of thought patterns. The Ten of Swords is the ending of a thought cycle. Swords are always our intellect. They're our thinking. They're the way that we think of things. Ten of Swords is ending a cycle, but we have our Ten of Swords in reverse, which is refusing to end a cycle. The cycle will not end because you are not, it's not upright. So this, you're not ending a thought pattern cycle. You're staying stuck in a thought pattern cycle that needs to be taken down with the tower. The tower, again, um, if you are identifying with this, if this is sounding right to you, you might want to check out pile number two, also had Ten of Swords and the tower come up. So you might find there's a message there that you need to hear. So with the Ten of Swords and being thought patterns that you are stuck in that are not serving you, they need to be torn down. But again, with lies, again, with deceit, you, again, you might have really been called to pile number two. So we've got the moon in reverse. And the moon is showing you patterns of behavior, patterns of thinking, patterns, patterns. In other decks, that's called the karma, the karma card. It's old patterns that have been with you for a long time that you don't see because they're hidden in the dark. This card was in reverse. So this is old patterns. This is ways of being. This is in intuition, connecting to your intuition, but in reverse. So it's, you're holding on to old patterns Again, just like with the Ten of Swords thinking patterns, you're holding on to old patterns that are not part of where you need to be. So the reason you're not getting the dreams fulfilled, the reason you're not getting your, um, your abundance that you're waiting on, you're, the reason that's not coming is because you've got old thought patterns that you're still engaging in that need to be torn down. You've got uh, things that need to come to light. Things that are, again, shadow because the moon in reverse is things not being seen, things being hidden from you. So you've got thought patterns and shadows that are being hidden from you because of your parts that aren't coming forward. So again, the advice is going to be to move forward by talking to your parts. So what else do we have? The four of swords here. Can you clarify the four of swords for me? Why are we keeping to ourselves? Why are we keeping our heart to ourselves? Thank you. Because you're re you're you're make you're growing a new heart. <laughs> I, I, that's the best way I can say it. 
you've got the death and rebirth card. And this whole reading is about what your next transformation is going to be. So your transformation is going to be in your heart. Your transformation is going to be in the way that you connect with your heart and the way that you give your heart to other people, the way that you share your heart with other people and what you do with that as far as your intellect, as far as your thought patterns, you are going to be rebuilding your heart. You're going to be having a new growth in your heart. The death card in reverse is rebirth because death is an ending and re the opposite of death is birth. It's a rebirth. You are going through a rebirth in your heart. You are opening up into something that was not there before. That's the transformation. Can you tell me more about this King of Cups in reverse? What is unhealed? What is unhealed, please? <sighs> Believing in love. The Knight of Cups. The King of Cups is clarified by the Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups traditionally is someone coming with an offer. Someone coming to offer their heart. Cups are emotions. So... The Knight of Cups is coming to offer love, communication, commitment, offer your heart. Look at this card. He's got flowers to offer. He's, if you look down at the bottom, we've got a little picnic. We've got a letter there. We've got offer. We've got wanting to spend time and offer, but it's in reverse. So the thing that's unhealed is feeling like there is love offer for you. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Cups in reverse. So the transformation, listen, the vibe I'm getting is that you don't feel that you're worthy of love. And I'm getting shivers as I'm saying it, so I know this is a confirmation. The vibe I'm getting is that you don't feel that you are worthy of being loved. You don't feel worthy of being given an offer of love. You don't feel worthy of holding someone else's love. You don't feel worthy of a new love. And that is the transformation you're going through. Your heart is going to be upgraded. Your heart, the, the image I'm getting in my mind is of the Grinch, who's in that moment when they say his heart grew two sizes that day and it, it grows until it bursts the, the container around it. I feel like the, the transformation that's coming to you is a greater love, is an expansion of your heart space and believing that you are worthy of being loved that you are worthy of having love. And that's going to bring you that partnership, that two of cups that we pulled out in the beginning. That's going to bring you that partnership. Okay, let's get some more messages here. Can you tell me some more about this transformation for pile number three, this true blue friend that's coming, this connection that's coming, this healing that's coming. Can you tell me some more for pile number three, please? Thank you. Already. We got the Wheel of Fortune in reverse with change and the Hierophant in reverse with nothingness. All right. So already they're telling me that we are at the precipice of change. The Wheel of Fortune is talking about things changing. It's talking about your fortunes changing. It's talking about if you were on the bottom, things are going to swing up to the top. If you were on the top, things are going to swing down to the bottom. It's not, it's constantly moving and changing. Nothing is ever permanent. It is always changing. The wheel of fortune reminds us that it, things are always changing, but it also reminds us that if we are on the outside of the wheel, when the wheel is spinning, we're going to feel out of control. The best way for us to get into a place of control, into a place of feeling like we're not out of control is by being in our center. If you look at the center of the wheel where the yin yang is, the center of the wheel is calm. The center of the wheel is peace, just like in a storm, the eye of the storm is calm. But if you're on the outside of the storm, you're going to be whipped around. This is reminding us, just as you see on the wind all the way around it, moving around the wheel. This reminds you to stay in your center when things feel chaotic. I'm feeling, I'm hearing the words from um, Katy Perry's uh, Rise, where she says, um, I must stay conscious through the madness and chaos. So I call in my angels. It's reminding you to stay centered when everything around you feels like it's falling apart, when your towers are falling, when everything feels like it's falling, go to your center. Your center is the place where you will feel calm. You will be able to address these things and you will be able to heal through them. Go into your center to not be whipped around the outside. You got the Hierophant in reverse. This talks about embrace the nothingness. 
the gap, the space. You're not in a space. It's in reverse. So you are moving into, you are moving out of a gap into something new. Again, a transformation. It talks about, this card specifically talks about um, when you're in the unknown. It's also known as the void, the space in between. When you are in the space between the ending of one thing and the beginning of the new thing, it feels chaotic when you're in that, that space of nothingness in between lessons, when one lesson has been completed and a new one has not yet started in the space of pause in the nothingness, it is terrifying in the unknown. When I was in the unknown, I was continuously getting, um, in my shuffle playlist of like 3000 songs, the song that kept coming up over and over and over was into the unknown from frozen Two, where she sings into the unknown, into the unknown. Uh, how do I follow you into the unknown? And she starts off not wanting to go into the unknown saying, no, I'm happy where I am. I'm, I'm fine. Everything's finally good. I don't want to go into the unknown. But the thing about the lessons in the unknown is that we don't get to choose, just because we crested a lesson doesn't mean that we stay at the top. We're going to be given another lesson and we're going to drop again. And it's when we get to the top, when we crest that lesson to take a moment to enjoy the view, take a moment to enjoy the pause because you're going to go down again and you're going to be in another lesson. The nothingness is enjoying the gap between. And when we don't know what our next lesson is going to be, it can be very scary. It can be terrifying. We don't know what's going to happen. And we have to just put faith in the universe that things are going to work out, that the next thing is going to happen, that things, but we have no guarantee that any of it's going to work out. The nothingness, the hierophant is reminding you that in these lessons, let go, let go. You don't control it. You don't control the void. The void is just a space where you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You ha you're going to be uncomfortable and there's nothing to do about it other than to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Get comfortable with things being changed. Get comfortable with the change that is going to come for you because this is a transformation. Be playful about it. Yes. Take things playfully with the Knight of Wands. In this deck, it's playfulness. When you're meeting these difficulties in life, as you're changing and transitioning, remember to allow yourself to find the joy and the playfulness in life. Because when you are in the void, when you are in the nothingness, when you're in the unknown, it is scary. So adopt that concept that people use of using humor to diffuse, find the playfulness, be silly, allow your inner child to come and play, allow your inner child to come and be free, allow your inner child to let you be, have fun. It doesn't have to be serious all the time. You can allow yourself to have fun because when you're not having fun, you're going to block your creativity because we've got the, the empress in reverse. And the empress is all about connecting with your creative energy. She's the creator. She's mother Gaia. She's our creative energy. And when we have it in reverse, we have feeling uncreative, feeling uninspired, feeling that life is dull and, and not worth living. And that, and when we come in that, that falls directly on top of our four of swords and our rebirth. So that might be where you're feeling dull. That might be why your heart is feeling like it needs a rebirth is that you're feeling like life isn't worth living anymore. It's doldrum. It's boring. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's not a joy, but you're being reminded that you're, you're going through a transformation with that. That's the, your heart is going to be rebirthed and you're going to be breaking through beyond the illusion. Right? You're going to be seeing through beyond the illusion. So what's coming in your transformation? A whole lot, <laughs> a whole lot. So buckle up, buttercup. You got a lot coming to you. But remember, remember, in order for th something new to be built, the towers have to fall. And this is part of the journey. And it's not the greatest, funnest part of the journey, but it is a very important part of the journey through the rebirth and through the transformation. So what, what's your next transformation? You're going to be a butterfly, baby. You're going to be a butterfly, <laughs> but you're going to have to go through your cocoon phase first. Okay. 
So I hope that this was given, gave you some insight. I hope this gave you some idea as to what's coming in your transformation. I hope this was useful to you. If you liked this, don't forget to give a thumbs up and to subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Um, you can check out my Patreon for more exclusive content. If you'd like to book a personal reading, all that information is in the description box below. You'll also find information on following my Instagram and my Facebook at Get In We're Going Healing. And you'll also find a spot if you'd like to give a donation. If this was helpful to, for you and you wanted to give a donation, you'll find all that information in the description box. So until next time, fellow humans, love and light. Bye.